Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Both That is Drew Galloway. And here on this Tuesday after uh, less than 24 hours ago, K-State was able to land two commitments, one in the class of 2025, but the first one was the first member of the 2026 class of commits at K-State, proving that the big recruiting weekend that K-State had for their game with KU over the weekend was already paying dividends, even though one of those uh, seemed like a foregone conclusion going into it with Darian Whitaker, who we will talk about. Uh, but let's start on the 2026 front and talk about Brandon Ford because I don't know how many people had him on their radar prior to the visit, and then you did an update with him yesterday morning. And I think by the end of reading your story, everybody at KSO had Brandon Ford on their radar because he had some pretty glowing comments about K-State. Yeah, he was somebody that definitely I don't think was on a lot of people's radar going in. I I mean, and that's part of just him being in the younger class. And a lot of times, like with this junior class, before you really get to see how things shake up over the spring and summer, we kind of like to just focus on, okay, this is what's going on in state and, in, and even in the region. And then, you know, in the, the list of, over 70, closer to 80 uh, prospects on hand in Manhattan over the weekend. You you saw Brandon Ford was on there and it's okay. Now you know that he's visiting. And then it, it just was kind of like a happenstance that, you know, K-State wins. And the, the one thing that we really like to do when K-State wins against KU, and especially when you have that many visitors there for a home game, is to just kind of get like a, Hey, like, what did you think of the game? Like, what, what was the visit like for you? And then in that thread, you really got to see the first real, like, glowing quote about Brandon Ford. And you're like, okay, like, this is somebody that you probably need to know about, like, more going forward. And then you get the, the visit recap where I mean, he flat out just said, like, yeah, I've been to five different schools this fall, but, like, nobody has ever really came close to as good as the visit to K-State was. And, and that's just kind of the vibe that you get. And then I think that he said something about how he could see himself at K-State in the near future. And that's when the light bulb kind of hit for me is like, okay, this, this is something that is like very serious and could be happening in the near future. Now, I didn't think that it was like tomorrow or yesterday. Like, I didn't think that it was like, oh, this could be like something that happens later today. Or as I was talking to him on Sunday, I wasn't like, I, there was no part of me that was like, oh, this could be like something like he commits tomorrow. But I was like, okay, this is something that, like, in the spring and, like, going forward, we probably need to know about. And, like, that's this is a guy that I really need to keep on my radar. Uh, I did put him on commit watch yesterday, which hasn't been posted yet. And I don't know if it will because it's kind of irrelevant now. But I did throw him on commit watch yesterday. It's just like, a, hey, like, this, this is something that, like, you don't really hear super often uh, from somebody in the younger classes. Uh, so you fast forward and then you're like, okay, a 2026 name. And that's when I kind of got to, okay, this is probably going to be Brandon Ford. And it, it's a big win for K-State and we'll get into it in, in a little bit, but you know, this, this is just something that when you haven't had him on your radar for super often or for super long, like that, that was one of the things that I told you and DY yesterday. I was like, Oh, I didn't realize how many powerful offers that he had from other schools until yesterday while I was writing, writing up the commit story super quick. Oh, yeah, you're on mute. You go through and look, and you see eight Power Four offers for Brandon Ford, K-State obviously being one, uh, but then a lot of Big 12 schools, Texas Tech, Arizona State, Arizona and Houston, and then Pitt, Nebraska, and SMU uh, in there as well. So they're you know highly sought after at this point for being a 2026 recruit. Um, which is is significant in all this. Now, before we talk about what Brandon Ford is as a player, with a young guy committing this early, specifically an out-of-state one, um, where does K-State have to go and how they still have to kind of be on the offensive with maintaining this commitment now until we get to uh, you know December of 2025? Yeah, they have to stay on the offensive. So, I mean, the, the best way is to just get them on campus more and more and 
now that he like we're in this point where he can talk to the K-State coaching staff as often as he would like to, it, it's a lot easier. If this was like a if he was in the 2027 class, that's kind of where I think that you got more worried because there's still some rules in effect where he can't talk to the coaches like super often. But he was a high priority from from the jump. And I think that you really see that because it's not very often that K State will take a commitment from a player in the younger classes this early if they're out of state. So that also means that K State really, really likes Brandon Ford and wanted to kind of get out in front because I think that there was a part of them that thought that, okay, other schools could really jump in on Ford and he really likes us and we really like him. Like, why not just have it all come together and come together after? what ends up being uh, the 16th straight win over KU. And, and I put put it in the, the commit story for Brandon Ford, where it's very similar to in 2022 when K-State beat KU. Uh, they got a commitment in the 2023 class with Will Lee. And then the 2024 class, that same night, it was the, that same Monday right after beating KU, Gus Hawkins made the call to commit to K-State. So maybe the 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 key in this is, let's just play KU at home every year because you just get two commits from the game. Oh, and then the other thing that I would add with this is that his ranking right now, 83.7, as you can see on the screen, uh, it will only increase because 247 and ESPN still have not ranked him. Uh, on three years ranking is an 88, so he's closer yeah. to a four-star than a three-star. Yeah, yep, good to, good to know. And as we've seen... Uh, uh, well, 24-7 and ESPN, ESPN specifically, historically very generous with their grades in a lot of ways. Uh, and 24-7 seemingly recently, if you look around at some of the K-State uh, commits out there, 24-7's liked them even more than, than on three has. So uh, I think that's probably a pretty safe bet. Now, in terms of what Brandon Ford is as a player, no, it's early in the process, but what's your general idea of that right now? So the, the biggest strength for him, I, I think, is when the ball is in the air. He, he is a big playmaker when, when uh, the ball is coming his way and can intercept passes, can break up passes, and, and is always really close to the receiver and able to do that. And, and that's an important skill to have, not only just as a corner in general, uh, but also because uh, unlike a lot of past K-State corners that you've seen, he's only around like that six-foot range. So he is on the shorter side for a K-State corner. Uh, and then what, what I'm really looking forward to from him uh, this offseason is to kind of get to get a better gauge of where his speed is at. His, his track numbers from this past spring won't blow you away, but they're still plenty fast enough. And, and I think that part of that is just like he was a sophomore last spring, and there's so much changes in your own body that happen in between like your freshman and sophomore year, your sophomore to junior year, where I, I always kind of make the the joke that sometimes these kids just don't know how to run because they're not used to the size that they have currently. But I would imagine that you'll see his track numbers get a little bit better. And the other thing that I really like about his tape is that he is very physical in the run game. Uh, not quite to the Julius Brents level of like, being that elite trait of being good in the run game, but he is very, very physical and probably more Jacob Parrish like the, than Julius Burns, but Jacob Parrish has also been really good in the run game this year too. Yeah. Uh, good to know on Brandon Ford before we move on and we uh, step back a year, go to the class of 2025. Got to remind people that you can join your Wildcats in Ireland as they kick off the 2025 football season against Iowa State and the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Game tickets can be secured now through a travel or hospitality package. All-inclusive travel packages include premium game tickets, luxury hotel accommodations, and exclusive K-State welcome experience and more. Game day hospitality packages include premium in-stadium hospitality with food and drinks and premium game tickets. Don't miss out on the trip of a lifetime. Book your package now at cats2ireland.com. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. So a uh, good reminder there for everybody. And I want the people to know that I have loosely started the process of getting my passport. So uh, that's, that's AKA, still I, at this point. 
I downloaded the PDF from the Passport website and I started to fill it out. Uh, I've confirmed different dates and personal information for it. So we are uh, we're getting there, folks. We're we're getting dangerously close uh, <laughs> to me thinking about actually walking into one of the offices that I have to go to to get that done and uh, take care of business. So, yeah, there you go. I'm, I'm getting there, making progress, which is that, good news. Still better than me. Yeah, well, you know, well, uh, we all have time. You know, that I know that I know the passport process is very smooth and easy and quick. Uh, no reason to worry about that taking too long. Uh, all right, let's get back on track here. And uh, like I said, step back a year in recruiting classes and go to 2025 with Darian Whitaker, who is out of Omaha. K State's had pretty good success recruiting Omaha under Chris Kleiman. Now they get a defensive player who had previously been committed to Northern Iowa. He had decommitted a while ago, felt like this thing was kind of coming. Uh, and then this visit to Manhattan was kind of the last thing that needed to be taken care of before the commitment came. And uh, you already, I think, have some intel that he may not be a linebacker when he gets to K-State. Yeah, I really, really like Darren Whitaker. I said that from the moment that he was offered and, and seeing him at the K-State camp, that it was one of the best camp performances that we had seen all summer long. And that I was kind of nervous that K-State was just going to let Darian Whitaker walk in the sense that they already had four linebackers already committed. Whitaker was working out at linebacker. And at that point, like it was a, okay, what, what happens from here? And they ended up deciding to offer him as they should have, because he was just that good at that camp. And you kind of get the feeling that, okay, this is going to happen. You just don't know when. And he was not shy about tweeting about how how much love and affinity for K State that he had pretty much since the moment that he offered. I mean, you you go back and you look at his Twitter feed from uh, over the weekend. I think it was on Friday night. He was tweeting at some of the 2026 guys to like join the K State class, and it's like, dude, you haven't even like officially committed yet. So like that's when you kind of knew that it was like, OK, this is just kind of a foregone conclusion that as long as the weekend goes by very swimmingly and it always does, that he was going to join the class. Uh, the, the one thing that I will say is that, yeah, I'm starting to doubt a little bit that he ends up at linebacker. I think that there's still a chance that he does. But just seeing him again and seeing him in person and looking at the pictures I think that he's going to grow into a defensive end. I, I just think that he is so big already because he's 6'3", 6'4", 215 pounds and has so much athleticism that he is almost like what Toby was in high school. And, and you would want to see where that kind of takes him because, you know, we, the case they tried the Toby Osinsami experiment at linebacker and, and it, it wasn't that it didn't work out, but he got so big that he had to move to defensive end. And, and I think that that could have easily happen to Darian Whitaker, because if you haven't seen his visit pictures, I made the comment in the thread when somebody asked if he could suit up to play linebacker on Saturday. He looks like he could play tomorrow if Case 8 asks. Yeah, and you mentioned Toby Austin Sami. You go back and look uh, at his recruiting profile in, in height and weight, 6'2", 210. So basically right where you're saying Darian Whitaker is uh, right now. And so this is this is maybe one, too. Why is it that K-State likes him so much and there seems to be a lot of potential here with the frame and the ability and everything else? Uh, we just talked about Brandon Ford, who already has all of these offers from different P4 schools. Why weren't more teams involved for Darian Whitaker? My guess is that it comes a little bit from his high school. I mean, but Boys Town High School is not your typical – uh, high school, and I believe that it is a boarding school high school because Darren Whitaker is from Baltimore originally, which is another thing that I, I think that you have to consider. And, and because of where he plays at, it's not like he's in the spotlight all the time. And, and by the time that Case 8 had offered, even though he hadn't publicly committed, I, I think that there was kind of a sense from other schools that it's like, okay, why, why even bother? offering him when you kind of get the sense that he's going to go to K-State because even Washington State and uh, USF 
it, it felt like they kind of wasted their time. I know that a, a USF coach like even went out to to Omaha uh, earlier this fall, and I was like, "Ooh, that feels like a bold choice." Because yeah, it's tough. And, and then uh, so, and and I think too that this is part of it is he the only places that he camped were K-State, Northern Iowa, Iowa State, and Nebraska. And, and I think that Nebraska was already full at the position. And I don't know if he's as much of a scheme fit for Iowa State as he is at K-State. Just with how K-State uses their linebackers and defensive ends is a little bit different than Iowa State even, even though they were on the same scheme. So you kind of look at that and you're like, okay, this is probably why. And, and there's just something about Darian Whitaker for me that, that this feels like a commit that K-State gets that you're like, okay, this guy is a lot better than like we initially thought that he could be. So I'm trying. I'm trying to get out in front of that, you know. Uh, and and again, his 82.81 rating uh, will just increase because it is. I think it is now just on three that it hasn't uh, ranked Darren Whitaker yet. But he's an 87 or 86, I believe, on 247. So he'll probably be pretty similar to that in the on three ranking, which will bump him up and will probably bump the K eight class into the top 40 now for the 2025 class. I had to do a lot of math there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, uh, there's a lot of calculations that still need to be done. Uh, so looking at then how this thing has kind of started to shape together and we'll have a, a more in depth recruiting update, uh, on Thursday of this week, just to kind of go over everything, uh, that kind of went on this weekend. Cause there were so many guys in town, but just for a, a general idea, where do you think the work is left to do in the class of 2025? I think that what is left now is you probably are looking at K-State wanting another high school offensive lineman and then probably at least one receiver from the high school ranks, if not two. And, and then after that, I think that you're looking at either Portal or Juco or probably knowing how K-State has operated in the last few years, a combination of both. Because uh, we're, we're getting towards the end of the 2025 class which is nice that it, it was already pretty much wrapped up uh, before the season started, but now it's October and you're like, okay, there's probably only three spots left for high schoolers. So K-State's in a really good spot. And this class I think might end up ranked higher than the 2024 class and maybe even higher than 2023, depending on how some things shake up with who they end up getting for their last handful of commits. And remember that we're, we're still we're still reevaluating some of these guys. And I, I believe that on three is the next site that has to reevaluate and doing reevaluations. And, you know, guys can always go up in those as well, which will just increase K-State's class as well. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, Cause on three needs to get on Lincoln cures uh, right now. I think uh, it's one of those where you'd probably want things to start, but uh, that is a look at the two latest commits to K-State and more to uh, come at some point. In the future, as Drew says, K-State will want to add some more to the 25 class. And uh, I guess maybe I should ask you, is this a springboard for more 2026 guys to to pop off early? Or are we going to be waiting a little bit longer like the 2025 class, which, you know, it took a while for Dylan Duff to get the party started. And then it came in pretty hot and heavy. Wouldn't quite say that's a springboard yet. I, I would say the next like time frame for me would be like January. So you still probably got a little bit, but at, at this point with how close case it is on some 2026 guys, I, I wouldn't be shocked at any time, but typically it's like that January, February, March time is when you're like, okay, this is where that's typically where I think that that springboard comes from. And, and that's where the first, four commits i believe came in the 2025 class for in that time frame gotcha all right that is uh what you need to know about the latest members of k-state recruiting classes a full recruiting update will come on thursday with drew as we get a little bit more reaction and thoughts from what the recruits took in in manhattan this past weekend and then uh, a lot of normal stuff throughout the rest of the week friday we'll have a preview and tomorrow we will have some wild overreactions i'm sure the K-State Fort Hay State basketball exhibition uh, that goes on tonight as well. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching and listening to KSO. Back again tomorrow, talking basketball. It's going to feel nice.